I've never been down there before. Down? Diving. Hi, my name's uh, Jonathan Hughes, representing the fan coverage today, and I'm here with the development team of the upcoming Dark Pictures anthology, Man of Medan. Medan, 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 as you will. So, if you'd like to just introduce yourselves individually uh, about what you guys do, um, your contributions to the new game. Uh, yeah, my name's Dom Island, I'm a producer on Dark Pictures and specifically Man of Medan. I'm Andy Nuttall, I'm production director at uh, Supermassive Games for the Dark Pictures Anthology. I'm Gareth Betts, I'm the producer for Bandai Namco Europe, working with Supermassive Games. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, so I just had a play of uh, the demo, the 90 minute demo, and yeah, I just say congratulations in advance on a pretty incredible, great horror game that I'll um, be definitely looking forward to picking up in late August. So, yeah. Thank you. So, Without too many spoilers, this is a bit where I would usually just ask about the plot of Man of Medan, you know, but um, but there is obviously a plot, but it seems that we're also going to be sort of creating our own journey in this game. Do you want to go a little into that, delve a little into that bit about the plot of Man of, Man of Medan? And well, you, you just you, you just played yeah 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 played quite a good yeah. chunk of it. Yes. Uh, which which, which what, what, was it? What was your playthrough like? What, oh, it was did fantastic. You, yeah, we, we had a flashback. Host, host or a client? Would you up on the boat or did oh, you go on the dive? Oh, I was on dive. Okay, okay. Yeah. so he was yeah. flying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a it was yeah. So that's a good example of uh, of how, um, as, as you said, we sort of uh, allow people to sort of choose a journey hmm. through the game. Yeah. Um, so in both multiplayer and, and single player, we allow people to, uh, uh, to to make choices which have consequences and to, um, uh, to to sort of forge their own way, I guess, through the game. Um, we we have uh, a system where all of the playable characters can live and all of them can die, um, and so that basically means that there's a phenomenal branching uh, uh, sort of logic engine behind it, um, in which you can choose your own your own destiny. I think. So yeah, the uh, the Dark Pictures anthology as a whole is uh, going to be a, a series of uh, standalone and independent. Uh, um, Cinematic horror narrative games, um, each with their own story and each with their own set of characters and setting and so on, um, which will have certain motifs and, and linking uh, aspects like the curator that you've uh, you've seen, but each their own story. Uh, Man of Down specifically is about a group of uh, American uh, young people who you know young rich. friends, uh, run young rich friends who uh, go on a, a holiday um, in the uh, South Pacific Ocean, uh, going on a diving trip. And uh, thinking it's going to be, you know, a nice relaxing uh, holiday for them, and then things uh, somewhat rapidly go awry for them, um, and they find themselves in the middle of a, a ghost ship, uh, kind of classical ghost ship horror story. But how it plays out is, as you say, you know, hugely up to you. Good, good, fantastic. Yeah, um, these dark pictures obviously say all different stories. You say independence, and there's no, there's not going to be like MCU connection to any of them. Or is that something that you like, like Marvel Cinematic, Cinematic Universe? Oh, like, they're all together, aren't they? Uh, these dark pictures. I mean, are they are they going to in, maybe intertwine or in maybe maybe no? Or is that something you might rest? one common thread. The, 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 the very common thread is the He's curator. The curator. Um, yeah. he, he acts as a sort of uh, a touchstone between them all, even between the levels and hmm. the scenes of um, of this game. Um, he he will help bind those together. Um, hmm. And provide some cohesion, but in he also between the, the in each individual game, um, he will uh, he will be there to you know be a, a touchstone between them, um, and also evolving his own storyline as well in time. Um, there's there's certain Easter eggs as well which we won't go into too no. much. Similar ish to what you uh, mentioned there with the Marvel sort. I think there'll be hints and things that, that you know eagle eyed uh, players will be able to pick up on that, that, that is relating to the, yeah know, so on. Um, but they are very much intended to be, much like an anthology, they're meant to be uh, able to be played in out of sequence if they want to be, and, um, and each on their own, you know. Yeah, so a friend of mine was talking about Black Mirror recently, and how many there's these sorts of things. Exactly, there's loads so. of people put together all sorts of YouTube videos of the, the, you know, the song that they of use in, Black, in loads of Black Mirror episodes and so, so on. So we, we, lo we love, I mean, obviously as a studio we love horror. Yes. It, of course, whether, whether it, it, in any form, whether it's written or movie or TV or games, yeah. uh, we consume an awful lot of it between us, so yes. I guess it's fair to say, and we have done for, you know, for our lives really, that's, that's, that's what we sort of live for. Yeah. Um, but uh, the idea of an anthology is interesting, 
um, you know, started 150 years ago as a written uh, concept, um, and we we've grown up with um, you know TV, for example, for, for Tales from the Crypt and Tales of Expected and yes. Black and now Black Mirror, but also um, Twilight, Twilight Zone, Zone. massive Fall Twilight Fall. Zone, yeah, um, and and so we thought three years ago or so when we started doing this, we thought, well, why isn't anybody doing this for games? You know, it, it seems like an obvious. Yeah, uh, an obvious thing to do, yeah, and obviously, you know, we realised how complicated it would be, particularly how complex it would be, particularly with the um, multiplayer aspect. Uh, it is phenomenally complex to do, and, and I, I think that's probably more fair to say why people haven't done it yeah. so far. Um, but we created a, um, a, a prototype back then, uh, which we played and thought this is really good. It was a lo-fi prototype. We had a, a tool that we used to. Uh, to develop our games in, and we develop all of our games in that tool. Um, it's a logic tool, it's, it's basically a flowcharting tool with some... Creative uh, with the storyboard tool. Yeah, it's called the storyboard tool, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so you can explore, you can uh, you can interact with things, you can you, you, uh, all your choices and consequences are all in there. Everything is in there as a, as a, as a game. Yes. Um, with with some sort of uh, sketch, like a, well, it's, well, the reason why it's called the storyboard tool is because we have storyboard sketches in there. Yes. That show the game, and we we consider that if you play a game in that form, uh, when you bolt all the graphics and the audio and the script and the, the dialogue on top of that, then you're onto a winner. As long as you can make it fun in that kind of lo-fi way, uh, so that's why we develop all of our games. And, and, and back then, when we started developing this anthology, that's when we felt that yes, is, is that like well, this is this this idea of of a short form, very highly branching um, uh, game. Uh, and then doing that again and again and again in, in different areas of this Dark Pictures universe is really compelling. And, and so, because we like it, we thought everybody who likes horror is going to like this as well. Fantastic. Yeah, well, let's talk about the elephant in the room. That was the big announcement that you guys made to us today, which is, of course, the multiplayer. The five people, one room, um, horror movie night, and the one to one, two player uh, thing. This is something. Revolut co op. This is something that's. Quite revolutionary for. I mean, multiplayer has been around forever, but this is horror multiplayer, unlike anything before. I know there's maybe a little thing with Left 4 Dead 2, but this is something completely different. Mm -hmm. This is something for movie nights, because I know mates of mine who like to hang out and watch movie nights, but this is something completely different. Um, well, tell us a bit more about this and what the idea came up with and why you said, let's do this. Well, well ho horror, although it seems slightly uh, obtuse to say it, but for horror it really is a kind of a multiplayer thing anyway you know pe people generally watch horror together yes uh, and then and then compare notes you know or hug each other while you're watching something really scary <laughs> or, or, yeah. or talk about it during or, yes. or, or and, and as you said with, with, with until dawn we saw people like literally together on the sofa you know, eating eat, eat together and yeah. talk on each other and having drinking games and uh, it, it, it is a or, or the water cooler moments. You know, talking about the things that you saw last night and yeah. the film or something. Like that. It's all shared. People share the, the, the concepts uh, between them and, and the, the effect that it has on them is, is a shared experience. And so it was. A, it wasn't a big loop really for us to go right. Well, let, let's make this. Let's extend all of that and, and make this uh, what we consider to be rather wonderful kind of like shared experience with with, with horror. Because ultimately, what what we're doing with horror is taking normal human beings, characters, allowing people to fall in love with them or hate them or develop some kind of emotional, really strong emotional tie with them, mm -hmm. and then subject them to unimaginable terror and then see what happens. Awesome. You know, it's a, it's that, that's that's pretty much the concept of, of, the, of the of the of the format. Um, and then, and then we just play about with the different subgenres of horror and things like that that we can that we can develop these narratives with. Um, and so we, we we love some of those characters. We we've grown with them, grown with them absolutely. And uh, you know, it feels like our children in some ways. It's like we're, we're releasing them into the world today. You know, that we're, we're by watching people playing it, it's really quite terrifying in its own way. You know, we've we've developed these characters for the last three years, and now people people are you know. Killing them. Killing them off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think horror is an incredibly interesting uh, genre in itself where it can be both incredibly social and incredibly, uh, you know, uh, cooperative and, and together in ways of, of people discussing it and, and experiencing it together, but it can also be incredibly isol isolationist and, and solitary. Um, and we get to kind of do both with this where, um, you know, we can, we can throw you in together in multiplayer and have you 
build these bonds and, and you know all your choices affect the relationships between the characters really choose how you want it to go and then rip you apart and the, in the you know as your narratives you know diverge and then converge back together again later on with all your consequences affecting each other um, yeah. and it's uh, it's really interesting that uh, we can play around with that and, and as, as game makers yeah it's a it's an interesting canvas for us Speaking of the, uh, we're all, as a horror community, people who love to watch horror movies and play horror video games, it's just whatever. You guys are pretty much on tour now, and you will be attending Fright Fest this year, the 25th anniversary of Fright Fest. In the, you come to well, Fright Fest, my man, and will be presented at Fright Fest. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, 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 I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah good one. Oh, it's great, it's great. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's you'll have it so much, no, I think, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. I'm not sure. I think it's yeah, yeah, so from what I understand, Fright Fest, you're going to have a presentation of the game and a QA afterwards. In October, yeah, it's uh, August Bank like, Holiday Weekend. Oh, August Bank like, Holiday Weekend, right. weekend. Yeah, 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 so so I thought, I thought it was actually specifically you guys. So, yeah, uh, well, I was going to the side problem is because we're, we're developers, we're yeah. right in the cold place, and so yeah. we generally don't look over the parapet until we <laughs> get yeah, 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 yeah. Gareth or yeah. says, Right, you guys going here now. So exactly, it's going to be a bit worse. <laughs> I thought you'd be going because I was going to see what films you'd be interested in seeing at Fright Fest, but yeah, oh, right. still. But yeah, I was, I'm glad to see, because uh, um, you had Until Dawn at Fright Fest in 2014 yeah. as well, and um, as part of the curator, uh, he reminds me a lot of um, Peter Stormare's character in like Until Dawn yeah. as well, as the psychi psychiatrist, another great game. Mm -hmm. So what challenges, um, what, what was more challenging for you in Man of Men than, than it wasn't in Until Dawn? Like, what new chances did you have to face in Man of Men in comparison to... Giving the Simpsons the development. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the development, the actors in particular, because you got... Uh, well, last time you had an Academy Award winning actor in Rami Malek. Yeah, but, but, the, but interestingly, at the, at the time yeah. when, we, when we employed him to work on the game, you, yeah, it wasn't was, an Academy Award winning actor. No, no, I'm just saying... No, but it's interesting that, that yeah. you know, we were talking about this earlier on. It's, it's yeah. like, uh, we, we try to go for the best talent. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the talent that we think is most appropriate for, for the game, and that, that applies to all of the Dark Forest right. games. Um, but Rami Malam, so you can talk about this better than I can, because I wasn't, I wasn't around for it until dawn, but yeah, yeah. it was. But, um, but, but I know that, that you know, Hayden Panettiere was a, was a, was a big she name. She was the established. Um, she was the established yeah. But, but yeah. Rami Malik has, has gone, you know, he, he's, 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 like a, yeah. he's like a child that we've sent out into the yes, you know, so It's like, wow, we're really proud of you, he's Rami. Rami. You know, he's <laughs> amazing. Um, but, but at the time, he was just a really, really good, solid actor, you know, mm. relatively unknown. Yeah, yeah we, um, we use a nice mix of established, you know, Hollywood talent and recognisable names, but also up and coming uh, actors, you know, even Brett Dalton, who was also in Until Dawn, went on to Mark. Or Agents of Shield after we cast him and so on. So um, there's, there's, you know, it, it's really, really exciting seeing these people uh, that we work with and that we think are, are great, then go on to other things, and then it happens during our development uh, as well as we tend to go along. It, we see them grow with us, and it's, it's fantastic. Uh, and then in terms of the, the, the challenges, that the, um, the the main challenge, I guess, is be because even though it's a short form uh, format. Uh, of some four to five hours of gameplay, the branching is truly astonishing. It's it's, it's huge. I mean, it's it's really difficult to describe. Um, we do have some sort of metrics which you might. Yeah, I mean, we we have like sixty nine death sequences, for example, sixty nine separate death 69. sequences, <laughs> sixty nine. Yeah. And and in order to see all of those, it's a minimum of eight playthroughs, full playthroughs of the game. Well, that's a minimum because you might not. You, you, in, in, in order to, to play those eight. Playthroughs and see all those deaths, you'll have to choose exactly every option yeah. that, you that you need to. Do to so it could be dozens deaths. and dozens, and you still don't see the deaths. That's just the deaths, yeah. Just yeah. The deaths. yeah. So without the relationships, all the, uh, the other dynamics, the everything is hugely branching, yeah. 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 which, lots is, lots of which is, is a challenge, but at the same time, because of the way that we constructed the game, because we mapped the whole thing out uh, with multiplayer in mind from the get go as well. Um, it really allowed us to to know what we were making the whole way through, and then just follow it through to completion. Um, the, but the challenge is for the production really is, is it, 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 for example, it's uh, the uh, writing the script in, in order to cope with all of that branching mm -hmm. is a challenge. Yes, um, and also getting the actors, directing the actors to uh, act the same scene multiple times 
with sometimes totally different, you know, diametric opposite feelings and emotions. Sometimes they'd be really, you know, you'd be going right. Well, you're really happy now, and the, you hate that play, the other character you're with, and you really like that character. Right, go. <laughs> Just say the same line, and then they've got to say the similar line, but now that things are swapped yeah, around, yeah. you'd be like, yeah, they're really yeah. angry, or they might be, you know, terrified or something like that at that point. And it's 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 a challenge for them, it, and, and it requires us to have incredibly uh, um, tight direction mm. of the actors and also really skilled actors. Yeah, they've, they've got to be I think it's one that they, they relish as well. Sean Ashmore has talked about a lot about how much he enjoys uh, doing it. He obviously worked uh, on, on, he's worked in games before, mm. but um, he's spoken about how much he really loved working with us and, and doing this kind of branching narrative. Not only does he get to play a character that he wouldn't normally play, a very different you know, mm. kind of character to his, his traditional roles, but also the, the way that it branches and the, the variety and how much control you have as a player of, of where his character goes and how he, how he reacts to people, what bonds he forms with people, what he chooses to do you know, with, uh, with his friends and so on. And uh, it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, so I actually saw him in a movie with uh, Culture Shock um, with um, just like Gigi Sol Guerrero and he was really good at that. And it's like, so it was really good to see him that and then see him in this too. So he's definitely, I saw documentaries of him as well. Mm. So he's very talented. talented. He's really he's talented. So he yeah. definitely cares. You know, yeah. he, he basically, I mean, he's a, a top dick. He can't be a dick, but still. Yeah, he's cool. <laughs> it just goes yeah. to show how good he is. But in real life, family man. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 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 So, as you said, he relished I've heard nothing really nice yeah. things about him. Yeah. Yeah. He's a yeah. really yeah. nice lad. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, the compass is really is pointing a lot of ways. One specific way is pointing towards the pre ordering of this game because you've got a lot of really cool pre order uh, bonuses. Is there any chance we can go into a little bit more detail about the pre-order bonuses? Um, just to, just to get people pre-order yeah. the hell out of this game. So if you pre-order the game, you get what we call in the Curator's Cup. Yes. So it gives you the opportunity to play the solo playthrough from a different perspective. So today, as you, uh, as you well know, you was uh, you were on the dive. Yeah. So while she was on the dive, there's a whole act playing out on the boat above here, and obviously you saw that the fire from the barbecue exploded. Yes, yes. Or another example is, is when you arrived at the boat, you would have been Brad, I guess, yeah. speaking to Alex. I think so. I think so so yeah. then you'll get the chance to be Alex and, and play from that perspective. Oh, I see. So the areas of the game that you don't get to see, although you do get to see the multiplayer mode, we kind of fold back into the um, curator's so, cup. Yeah. So it's, it's an alternate route through the game almost, an alternate perspective, as you say, yes. of, the, of the solo single player story, if that's how you choose to uh, to experience it. Obviously you're free to experience it in multiplayer and, and, uh, and so on as well, but yeah, for, for people that choose to pre-order, uh, they will get that at launch and they'll be able to, to play that uh, additional route. Um, if they and, don't, we will, and we will be releasing yeah. that. Later in the year, we don't, we, yeah, we don't, we don't want to them. lock people out of this content them. either. Um, yeah. you know, we, we want everyone to be able to play uh, the way that they want to. So later in the year, we'll uh, we'll release it as a, for everyone. But um, if you pre-order, you'll be able to play it from day one. Yeah. Nice one, fantastic. Um, John, thank you very much for having thank us you. having me on board today. And yeah, on board. Thank, thank you guys. Thank you. On board, yeah. on board. Yeah. yes, <laughs> absolutely, mate. Looking forward to. Uh, when's that out again? It's thirtieth of August. August thirtieth. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Right. Thank you very much. Guys! Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the Fan Carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.